This episode is brought to you by Indie Film Hustle Academy, where filmmakers and screenwriters go to learn from top Hollywood industry professionals. Learn more at ifhacademy.com. You also, dude, you, you worked on a great show called Mob City for mm. another master, Frank Darabont. Man, is there anything you learned from him as far as storytelling? Because I'm everybody knows on the show, I'm obsessed with Sean Shank Redemption and Green Mile for that matter. I just, it's like, it's just one, it's my remote throwaway movie. Uh, if it's on, done, just keep yeah. going down that road. Did you, I mean, you worked with him obviously closely in the film, yeah. uh, on, the, on the show. What did you, did you learn any uh, lessons that you can share? That's interesting. You know, uh, I mean, I love Frank, love working with him. He's a great guy. Um, his style is so different from what I do and how I learned how to make movies. You know, like we were talking before, like I only know from not having enough money and having to compromise right. and figure and learning how to pivot and be like, oh, you mean we, we can't have that location? Okay, we'll shoot it on the street corner or that act is not available. Let's quickly rewrite. You know, Frank does not work that way. I mean, like, so I think what I learned from him is, you know, he fights for his vision. Um, you know, if I, let's say, if I have a weakness, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure I have a number of weaknesses as a filmmaker, but one of the big ones is uh, I'm not willing to fight for certain things because I know there's an alternate way to do it. Um, and there are times where I look back and think, like, you know what, I should have actually fought for that one. Maybe that's right. why the movie didn't turn out so good. Maybe you don't always have to pivot. Um, Frank never pivots. You know, he like, he has a vision in his head and come hell or high water, he is going to make that happen. Um, so, uh, so, you know, and, and, and again, I then, from that experience, you know, a guy named Michael Wright uh, ran TNT at the time. I meet Michael on the set of that and that's how I end up making my show for TNT, Public Morals. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Michael now runs Epics, which is how I ended up making Bridge and Tunnel for Epics. Yeah, so Public Morals was your first uh, introduction, basically, to a, a sh being a, a creator of a show. And mm -hmm. you wrote the show, you act in the show, you direct. Did you direct? You didn't direct all the episodes, right? Or yeah, I wrote and directed all the episodes. So you wrote and Jesus Christ, man, that's a hell of a schedule to do as a TV. Guy. <laughs> like you're writing. You said there is no writers' room. You're the writer, you're the director, and you're the actor in television. That's obscene. Uh, it's an obscene amount. But I wrote order. everything beforehand, like I did. With I mean, yeah, yeah, you're not writing as you're shooting, obviously, yeah, but yeah. still, it's still a tremendous amount of work, um, and it's gorgeous. I, I mean, I saw parts of that show when it came out, and it was gorgeous, man. It was beautifully shot. It, it was well, so much fun. Like, we we suddenly had money. You know, we're so <laughs> used to making things on a, on on these lower budgets. You right. Know, the TV budgets are significant, and you know, Will and I were just in all of our glory. It was like, oh boy, we finally get to play with the camera. We got it some is toys. Capturing an image, yeah. you know, we love the toys. So it was a blast. To watch the rest of this interview, head over to IndieFilmHustle.com.